Today's lesson is working with the exponent laws, which is section 4.6 in your book if you want to see more examples. The learning intentions are going to be to review exponent laws learned in earlier grades. There's not really anything new to this lesson. It really is just putting together everything you know from previous grades and a little bit from the earlier sections in this chapter. So we need to review those exponent laws. Next, we need to be able to simplify expressions with the same base. So when you have a 3 squared times 3 to the power of x minus 2, they both have a base of 3, so it's a base, an exponent, base, an exponent. When the bases are the same, you can start to uh, simplify them. And last, we're going to simplify expressions with exponents. So here's an algebraic expression. We have 5x squared y cubed divided 12xy negative 4. There's some things they share in common here, so we can simplify it down using okay, our What I've done to start laws. here is we're going to review our exponent laws from grade 9. So I've put them all up name them, product of powers, and then show an example of letters. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an example of numbers to each. So a product, product means multiply. Quotient means divide. Power is an exponent. So to start with, product of powers, we are multiplying. So this only works when they're the same base. So this has a base A, this has a base A. If you are multiplying two things that are the same base, multiplying two things that are the same base, when it's multiplying, what we can do is we can add the exponents. So this m and an n becomes a to the m plus n. An example would be if you had 3 squared times 3 to the power of 3. Well, we have the same base. And the big hint now is when you see things with the same base, these are the ideas you're going to need to use. Look for them. They won't be there by mistake. So 3 squared times 3 cubed, we can, using the product law, when it's multiplying, we add these pieces together. So it is 3 to the power of 5, and now that is something we could simplify if they need it. Next is quotient law. So if multiplying product added, quotient is dividing, it relates to subtract. So multiplying is adding, dividing is subtract when we're dealing with powers. So a and a, they both have the same base. That's the key. You cannot mix them if they don't have the same base. So a to the power of m, divide. That's quotient. a to the power of n. When we divide, we subtract the powers. So it's m, the top one, minus n, the bottom one. An example would be we could have 3 to the power of 5 divided by 3 squared. Well, it's dividing two things that are the same base, so I can subtract the exponents, and it's 3 cubed. Next one, power law. Power law means there's a power on a power. So it's a to the power of n with another power outside of it. So when you're powering powers, it's multiply. So multiplying, we add. Dividing, we subtract. Powers, we multiply. So an a to the power of m to the power of n, a power of a power, we multiply them, so we get a m times n, which is simplified to be a m n. An example would be if we had 3 squared cubed, we have a power of a power, we multiply them. So this is 3 to the power of 6. If you want to check it, you can go ahead. Um, 3 squared is 9, 9 cubed, a big number, I think it's 729, you can check it, check it out. And then check out 3 to the power of 6. Are they the same? They will be, because of the power law. Next, power of a product. So what we have now is we have two different bases. So we're not combining them together. But when two things are being multiplied with a power outside, this power technically needs to affect both pieces. When there's a bracket, the power outside, that power comes into every part of the bracket. So it's a to the power of m. And it was a times b to the power of m. OK? And this works in both directions. So for example, if I had 3 to the power of 2 times 6 to the power of 2, because they both have the same power, we can put it in a more simpler form. Sorry, so 3 times 2, sorry, 3 times 6 squared. Okay. Um, this would be rare. Typically, you're not going to be doing this. You're going to be doing this when you have to simplify letters like x. A power of a quotient, we have a power 
Quotient means dividing, so we're dividing these two pieces. And just like the last one, when there's brackets outside, this value has to affect both pieces. So it's a to the power of m divide b to the power of m with a simple rule that b of m cannot equal 0. The reason is, whenever you see this things can't equal 0, it's always because you can never divide by 0. So they're simply saying that this cannot have a value of 0 because you're not allowed to divide by 0. So now what we're going to do for the rest of the video, we're going to take these laws and we're going to use them to simplify different So what I'm going to do is we're going to look at some examples and we're going to start by looking at um, learning intention number two, which is simplifying when we have the same base. Okay, so we're going to use all of our exponent laws here. x cubed times x to the power of seventh. First of all, do they have the same base? Yeah, they're both base x, so we may start to simplify. So when it's multiplying, we use the power law. We add the exponents. So 3 plus 7 is x to the power of 10. Sorry, on the video that starts to look a little too close. There we go. Next, x squared divided by x5. Are they the same base? Yes, they're both x's, so we can work with this. Dividing is quotient, and for the quotient law, we subtract. So I get x to the 2 minus 5, which is x to the negative 3. And I've chosen this one specifically because we do not like negative exponents. They must be simplified. So what's a negative exponent do? From the last lesson, it is the reciprocal, which flips the fraction. So really, this is over 1. Okay, If it's not already a fraction, just put it over 1, and then it is. So this is 1 over x cubed. There's our answer. Next one. x to the power of 7 divided by x squared to the power of 5. This one's mixing 2. We have a quotient law inside the bracket and a power law outside. With bed mass, we work inside brackets first. So I'm going to work inside the bracket first. x7 divided by x squared. Well, when it's dividing, we subtract the exponents. So 7 minus 2 is 5. So I have x to the power of 5 to the power of 5. And powers of powers is the power law. We multiply 5 times 5. There it is. Next, x to the power of 5, divide y squared, all squared. Hopefully you see, uh-oh, not the same base. So we cannot simplify the inside any further. The inside is done. We can't mess around when they're different bases. But to simplify, we generally want to get rid of brackets. So this 2 can go ahead and make its way inside using the power law. Because it's outside, we have powers of powers x5 squared would be, power law is timesing, so 5 times 2 is 10. y squared squared, 2 and 2 is 4. So I get x to the power of 10, y to the power of 4. The last one, put a big one here. We have 3 to the power of 5, divide 3 to the third times 3 to 5 thirds, all to the power of negative 2. So bed mass, let's work inside this bracket first. I have First of all, are they all the same base? 3, 3, 3, good. So I'm going to work, um, we have power law, or there's power law down here. So let's work, I guess, simplify the top half of the bracket, already is. Bottom half of the bracket, it's timesing, so I can add these pieces. So if I rewrite this, a third, and it's timesing, so we're going to add 1 third plus 5 thirds. Nicely enough, they already have a common denominator. When you add fractions, they must have a common denominator. 1 plus 5 is 6, 3 and 3 is 3, so I get 3 to the 6 over 3, which is, okay, because 1 and 5 is 6, common denominator stays the same, 6 divided 3 is 2. Okay. So I've simplified the bottom of that fraction. Now, let's work inside. Quotient law, we have a base dividing the same base. So we divide our exponents. So 3, or sorry, subtract our exponents. 3 to the power of 5, divide 3 squared. 5 minus 2 is 3 cubed. Power law, a power of a power. We multiply, so I get 3 to the negative 6. And I do not like negative exponents. They've got to go away in simplified version. So this would be 3 over 1. So flip it to be 1 over 3 to the power of 6. And 3 to the power of 6, you can go ahead and put that in your calculator. 
And um, maybe we'll do that, actually. Let's see what 3 to the power of 6 is. Oh, got to find my power button. I just did, oh, I tried. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 729. So it is 1 over 729. Sorry you had to sit there and watch me fumble through a calculator. Um, so there it is. That is practicing all of our exponent laws when we have we're similar learning tension pace. number 3. And we're going to be simplifying some more algebraic expression using um, integer and irrational exponents. So the first one here, what we have is, can you work inside the brackets? Is there anything to do? There's not. We can't combine A's or B's. It's just a number, an A, and a B. But there is a power outside, so we can use our power law. And what's the power law do? It multiplies onto each piece inside. So I get 3 to the negative 2, because the power laws multiply. So 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. And now I do not like negative exponents. What it does is it makes it flip. So on the top of my fraction, anything with a positive exponent, this b4 stays b4. This 3 to the negative 2, that negative means I've got to flip underneath. This a to the negative 4, the negative exponent, makes reciprocal. So it makes it go underneath. And when it does, that negative disappears. Okay? So we could work backwards as well. This 3 squared, when it moves up on top, not part of the fraction, it takes its reciprocal. The reciprocal of 2 is negative 2. So make sure you're able to go in both directions. So now, finally, simplify. 3 squared is 9. And there we are. There's our simplified answer. In the next one, we have multiple things we can be doing here. We have a couple of A's, a couple of B's. So we can be putting those together. 6 and 15 are related, so we can simplify that. And then in the end, we're going to have a power out there, so we need to work with that. So first, 6 and 15 is both divisible by 3. So if I do that, I get 2 and 5. A cubed and A negative 2. So it's dividing. When we divide, we subtract. A cubed, 3 minus negative 2. So 3 minus and minus is plus. So I get A5. B2 divide means I'm going to subtract. So 2 minus 1B is B. My square is still out there. So I've simplified what's in the bracket. I've simplified my numbers by reducing the fractions. 3 minus and minus 2 is plus. 2 minus 1 is 1. And now this 2 needs to make sure it goes into all pieces. Okay. 2 squared is 4. 5 and 2 is 10. 1 and 2 is 2. So there is my final answer. Next one, 3x squared y negative 2 times x5 y negative 3. I have some things that have the same bases. x's have the same base here, y's have the same base here. When I multiply, I add. So 3 and just 1 is 3. But this x and this x, when we're multiplying, we add the exponents. So 2 plus 5 would be 7. Minus 2 plus minus 3 is minus, so y minus 5. And we do not like our final answers to have negative exponents. And a negative exponent makes it take the reciprocal. So this y negative 5 can become y5, but it's got to take its reciprocal, so it's got to go underneath. So I end up getting 3x7 over y5. Last one here. These may not look like the same base, but they do. There's a 5, and under here there is a 5. How can I get this 5 up? Well, take its reciprocal. The reciprocal of 5 or to the 1 would be 5 to the negative 1. Okay? Because 
we can make anything reciprocal by changing its exponent to negative. So it was a plus one, flip it, and it's a negative one. Now I have a bracket here, so I'm gonna work in the bracket, negative one and y, power law would give me five x times five negative y. And now my power law, I'm multiplying two things that are the same base. When I multiply, I add. So x plus, so I'll write this out maybe five, x plus minus y, well, a plus and a minus make a minus, so it's 5 to the x minus y. There's my answer. Page 242, questions 3 to 11, 14 to 16, and 21. Do A, C, E, and G. Um, and the one other thing, type of question I might have missed was, if it says evaluate, what will happen is they may give you a question like this, and they'll say evaluate. A equals 2. And they might say B equals 7. Well, what they want you to do, they don't want you to put a 2 in for the A and a 7 in for the B and a 2 in for the A and a 7 in for the B and figure it all out. You simplify it down and now you could put a 2 in for the A, a 7 in for the B and find out what your final number is. That'll be on question um, 15 goes over something like that. So here's your assignment. Um, good luck and stay classy math class.